everyone and welcome to the breakdown today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to start a forge server in minecraft 1.12.2 This will allow you to get forge mods on a minecraft server to play them with your friends have all kinds of fun all that awesome stuff Now before we jump on into this video I do want to say that this is not a 24-hour server meaning it runs off of your own computer's resources And if your computer isn't up and running the server the server will not be online It also runs off of your own network connection meaning that you cannot give the IP address out to everybody. If you do that, you will get DDoSed. It will be a bad time. I mean, people can even find out generally where you live through your IP address. So it's very, very important that you only give this to your friends and family that you trust. Because if it gets in the wrong hands, it can cause a bad day. Now, what if you do want a 24-hour server that is DDoS protected, that's not hosted on your own computer? What, what do you do? How do you get that? Well, you can go to the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash MC server to get an awesome 24 hour DDoS protected Minecraft server for just one dollar per month. You're not gonna find a better deal anywhere. So again, go check it out. The breakdown.xyz slash MC server. It's very simple to set up. It's plug and play. If you have any issues with this, I guarantee a server over there will work for you. Nevertheless, let's get on into the video. So in order to start a Forge server, you need to download Forge. And luckily, that is the second link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Forge. That will take you here where you can then scroll down and click the big green download Forge button. It will take you off to here where you want to find the version of Forge you want to set a server up for. In our case, it's going to be 1.12.2. It's already selected. And we then want to go over here to Download Recommended and click on the Installer button right there. It's then going to take us off to Add Focus where you don't want to click anything on this page. Don't click a thing except the Skip button in the top right that will come up after six seconds. Click Skip up there. It will then download Forge, which you want to keep. And you can now close out of Add Focus. Now if we minimize our browser here, here is Forge on our desktop. If yours doesn't download to your desktop, simply hit the Windows key on your keyboard and R at the exact same time and type in Downloads. It should be in your Downloads folder. Take it from your Downloads folder and drag it to your desktop. Once it's on your desktop, we actually need to uh, right click on it and then open with Java TM Platform SE Binary. We then want to click on the Install Server button right here and then we want to click the three dots right down here next to this directory, right? Click that, then you want to come over here and click desktop. And on your desktop, you want to right click and create a new folder titled Forge Server, right like that. You then want to click on, double click on that, and then click open. Now, again, and make sure install server is selected and click OK. It'll now download everything it needs to start a Forge server in Minecraft 1.12.2. I'll see you guys when it's done. Once it's done, you'll see this. Successfully downloaded Minecraft server, downloaded this number of libraries might be different, and installed Forge. Awesome. You can click OK there, but we're not done yet. We need to go back over here to our Forge installer, open it just how we did before, open with the Java TM Platform SE Binary, except this time we want to click on Install Client there and then click OK. It'll now download and install this version of Forge locally because we'll need to play that version of Forge in order to play on the server. I also want to mention take note of the version of Forge you have right here. Your friends will most likely need to install this version of Forge in order to play on your server. So make sure you take note of it right there. Write it down, find the link to it, save it, all of that stuff that way you can easily send it to your friends for them to download. You can send them the breakdown.xyz slash Forge in order to show them how to install Forge. But nevertheless, we can now click OK and come over here. This is the Forge server folder we created. Let's go ahead and open it up and in here we've got a few things. We've got Minecraft Server 1.12.2 and Forge-1.12.2. We want to run by double clicking Minecraft underscore server 1.12.2. You double click on that, it will open up the handy dandy EULA. What I mean by that is it'll download the EULA right here. You can then double click on this EULA to open it up in a text document and then go to this URL and make sure your server is not going to violate the EULA found there. If it's not, you can come down here to EULA equals false and change that to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E. Exactly like that. Go ahead and then save that and then come back over here and double click again on Minecraft underscore server dot one dot twelve dot two. It'll then go through and download some more stuff, this time opening up 
your actual command center, basically. Your control center for uh, your server here and load the spawn area. And it should eventually say done. When it says done, we can actually go ahead and stop the server by typing STOP right down here. Just typing stop. Click enter and it will close out of the server. Now, leave this folder open because we're going to be coming back to it. We now want to come over here to our Windows button. Yours is probably in the bottom left, but click on that and then you want to find CMD in here and you can just search CMD just like that. There's the command prompt. You then want to right click on it and run it as an administrator. It will then open up the administrator of command prompt and in this you want to type IPCONFIG. IP config. Hit enter and it will load a bunch of stuff. We're gonna need from this right here, your IPv4 address and your default gateway. First things first, we need to use the IPv4 address. We're gonna use it a few times, but it's the first number we're gonna use. You wanna come over here to your server, right? This server file, and you actually want to open the server file, right? It's titled server, it's a properties file, and you should just be able to double click on it. If you do have any troubles opening it with double click, just select notepad as uh, the thing to open it up with. And then you'll have all of the configuration configurations in your server. You can go through all this if you want, but I'm not going to right now. It's pretty easy to understand and truthfully, you don't need to change anything in there to get your server running except right here where it says server-ip. So find that server-ip equals and type your IPv4 address over here next to it. So 192.168.1.181 is what mine is. Yours is probably completely different from that and that's okay. That's why it is over here in the command prompt for you to copy over. Once you've typed that there, you can go ahead and click file, save, and close out of the properties file. Now, we want to keep both of these open and go to our web browser where we want to go to a new tab and type in from command prompt over here our default gateway. In my case, that's 192.168.1.1. Yours might be the same as that. It might be completely different and either way, that is perfectly fine. Once you've typed it into your web browser, hit enter and it will open a page that looks similar or completely different and most likely completely different from what you see right here. Yours might even just open up a little login box right that just pops up like right in this area or on the center of your screen or something like that if that's the case that's fine what you want to enter here is your router's username and password to log in if you don't know what that is go to i think it's the third link down below and you'll be able to find this the breakdown.xyz slash router passwords and it will walk you through all of the different ways to find your router password everything from talking to the person who set up your internet to checking the back of your router for it a lot of routers actually have it on them themselves to trying the default username and password from routerpasswords.com to even resetting your router and contacting your ISP. So there's tons of options. Walk through each of these individually and I guarantee by the time you're done with it, you'll probably have your router password. Anyway, I've got mine so I'm going to go ahead and log in. Once you've logged into your router, you'll see a page yet again that is exactly the same or most definitely completely different from this. If you have a Linksys router, it'll look the same. Maybe. If you don't, it'll look completely different and that is perfectly okay but what you're looking for is port forwarding for me it's under security and then up at the top it's under apps and gaming and then it is single port forwarding for you it might be something completely different it might be an advanced it might be an advanced advanced there are tons of different options that it could be but what you're looking for is port forwarding it might be under apps and gaming might be under advanced like i said might be under admin tools might be under even connectivity i've seen it before it's a little weird to me but i've seen it under that before but what you're looking for is port forwarding when you find that click it if you've got single port forwarding you want to go with that sometimes it's just labeled port forwarding and if you do have any issues Issues, you can click the fourth link down below, which will take you to our website, the breakdown.xyz slash, I think it's just slash setup router port forwarding. I don't know what it is, but it's linked down below and uh, it'll show you everything you need to know to uh, port forward your router. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and do that. Once you've found port forwarding, you want to add a new single port forward. You can title it whatever you want, just for easy use. I'm going to title it Minecraft. And then for your external port, you're going to want to do 25565. For your internal port, you're going to do 25565. 
0.65. So both your internal port and your external port are exactly the same. For protocol, you're wanting to do both or TCP slash UDP, right? Whatever it is, it'll be TCP slash UDP. It'll be both. It might be UDP slash TCP. Whatever it is, you want to make sure both of these are selected. And then for device IP, you actually want to type your IPv4 address. So if we come back over here, mine was 192.168.1.181. So this is dot one dot one eight one. Boom, there we go. We can now go ahead and click save and then we can click apply to save the port forward to our router. After that, you can click OK and the hard part's done. Port forwarding is the hard part of setting up a server. Now we can minimize our browser and guys, we can go ahead and launch the server. To do that, click on Minecraft underscore server dot one dot twelve dot two. That's gonna launch on into uh, the controller here. We can then also so go ahead and open up the Minecraft launcher. But in the Minecraft launcher, we want to make sure we select the correct version of Forge. To do that, we want to come back into our server folder. So we keep coming back to this thing and we want to make sure, so we've got 2611. So we want to make sure over here in launch options that our Forge profile is using version 2611. And it wasn't, as you can see, it was using 2624, not 2611. So we want to make sure that that is correct. Click save and then we can go over here click the green arrow next to the play button, click on Forge, and click play. Now it'll launch up Minecraft with Forge installed. Your server is already running and now I'm going to show you how you can join your server and how your friends can join your server. It is different. You're going to join it in a different way than your friends will join the server. I'm going to see you guys once uh, Minecraft has loaded up here. Once you're on the Minecraft main menu, you can go to multiplayer and then you want to direct connect. Where do you want to direct connect? Well, for you, you want to direct connect to this, your IPv4 address. So 192.168.1.181. You can then join that and uh, you'll be able to see your server is up and running and you actually see over here, Nick's Games joined the game. Pretty fun stuff. So we can, uh, can then jump around, play around, all that stuff. But that's cool. You know how to join your server, but the reason you're doing this is so you and your friend across the street can play together. So how, how, how can he join? Well, that's pretty simple. It's cool. We spawned in a snow biome. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, disconnect from the server there. And we want to then come up here, go into Google, just google.com, right? And then we want to type in I two letters IP and it will show you your public IP address now for you this is just a blurred set of numbers over here but for me it is my IP address publicly like I said you don't want to give this out to everybody so you've got to be careful but take this IP address copy it come back over here to Minecraft and then you then want to direct connect to that public IP address again blurred for you but uh, for, for, for me, it's it's my public IP address, it's numbers. Click join server and it will join into our server, which uh, has been running for some time now. And there we go, boom, cool as that. Now we can uh, come over to our server here and confirm that Nyx Games has joined right there. Easy and awesome stuff, guys. But uh, yeah, congratulations, your server is now set up. You want to give your friends your public IP address to uh, let them to join. They can't join off of your IPv4 address. So give them that, but only give it to people you trust. If you want to start a server that you can give to anybody that's up all the time and doesn't use your own computer's resources, you get more than five people on this server, you're going to have some lag issues on most computers, especially once you start adding some mods in there. So uh, yeah, you got to keep that in mind. And if you want more than five people on your server and want to be able to give the IP out to everybody, you can go to the breakdown.xyz slash MC server, the first link down below to get an awesome Minecraft server for just uh, for, for a four server. It's about $5 a month, I think. So go check that out. The breakdown.xyz slash MC server. First link down below. Now, if your friends do have issues joining this server, what you need to do is turn off your firewalls, right? First, check your port forward. Make sure that's correct. And if it isn't, then that's where your issue's at. But if your port forward is correct, you're going to want to turn off your firewalls, both your Windows Defender local firewalls and your antiviruses. And on your router, your router is going to have its own set of firewall protections. I can't recommend you doing this, but it will most likely fix the issue you are having. You are extremely exposed online when you do this, so be very, very careful. Do not download mods and install mods on your server without your firewalls on. So you're going to want to turn them back on when you're installing mods and doing maintenance and turn them off only when you're actively playing on the server 
with your friends. But nevertheless, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to install mods on your server, there's a video on your screen right now that will show you it uh, exactly how to do that. And uh, yeah, that's that. I'm Nick. This has been The Breakdown. And uh, I'm out, guys. Peace.